Hello, fellow traders. Nutty Bar Trading coming to you on a Saturday, July the 8th. And today's video, this is going to be the weekly summary report for week number 10. Hard to believe. Um, but yeah, it, we're just, we're going to review my overall progress on these funded accounts. Um, and just going to talk through, we're going to look at our, my account balances. We're going to look at our overall just performance um, on these funded accounts. We're going to use TradeZella to do that. We're also going to spend some time in just reviewing our week and kind of how our week went and just then talking about what I need to improve on, like what areas I'm struggling the most on and, you know, what I can do better, what I need to improve on. So also just, yeah, I want to make this clear, you know, I, I created this channel to document, to journal my trading journey. Um, I am not a professional trader. I am not a polished trader. I am a learning new trader. I almost feel like I'm a new trader, even though uh, my trading experience, I did trade for approximately five years, six years. And then I took a two year break completely away, did not trade anything for two years. And now I'm back and trading again. Um, I would say I've been trading kind of uh, for a year, but the first six months I was very, I had very little screen time. Um, the last six months is kind of when I've really had a lot of screen time. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of my, my journey. I get asked that a lot. Uh, but to be clear, I didn't, I didn't create this channel to show people how to trade. I didn't create this channel to um, showcase my talents, so to speak. I created this channel to document, to journal uh, my trading journey, and I'm nowhere close to where I want to be. So you're going to see me make a lot of mistakes. You're going to see me make the same mistakes over and over again. And uh, I know it's frustrating to watch that sometimes, and it's really frustrating watching me do it as well. So just bear with me. I am trying to learn. We're trying to get there. And uh, sometimes that's frustrating. But regardless, I want to just take a little bit of time here and just say thank you to everyone. Um, I think we, we created this channel about three months ago. And in, I never thought we would be where we are right now. Excuse me. Um, you know, I I remember telling uh, my wife that I my goal would get would be to get to a thousand subscribers in a year, and here we are three months in, and we're at twenty two hundred subscribers, which is just mind blowing. I never expected that, and I just wanted to say thank you to the community and to everyone that's subscribed, that's following along. Um, it really is encouraging. Uh, just to see the following um, and the encouragement. I really enjoy this community. So if that is something that you are interested, want to follow along, hit that subscribe button. Um, I really do appreciate it. And yeah, just as we go on this journey, we do trade live every day. Um, and again, like I said, transparency um, is very important to me. Being fully transparent with my trading is very important to me. And that's why you'll see everything. You'll see the good, bad, and ugly, and you'll see me struggle, and you'll see me frustrated at times. Um, most of the time, I'm frustrated over myself. So anyway, we'll just continue trying to learn and trying to get better. All right, let's just dive right in. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just review. We'll actually start with reviewing my account balances. <clears throat> and we'll just kind of do a summary. I feel like I need to just kind of give an overall update. So I started this journey. Um, the, the original videos that I put out actually was me trading, trading my final, I think, 10 evaluation accounts at the time. At the time, I had uh, 10 funded accounts, and I was basically... I decided, you know what, I'm going to try for 20 funded accounts. And then I started documenting and I started uploading to YouTube around that 10 funded accounts. So the final 10 evaluation accounts 
Um, I received, I got funded on those final 10 and we, we had 20 funded accounts. So kind of part of the progress along the way, just kind of want to do an update. So along the way, obviously, as you can see here in a little bit, uh, I'll just share a little bit first here. Um, <clears throat> obviously we did not start out very well. Um, that should be pretty clear. Uh, we, I'd have to go back and review everything, but we had a couple blowouts. We had a couple times where I went on tilt. Um, I revenge traded and it got pretty ugly and we lost a lot of money on some accounts where we went into a pretty bad drawdown on some accounts. Um, fast forward, basically overall, um, since we had the 20 accounts, I have blown six funded accounts. Um, I don't remember exactly when the dates and weeks it was, but you can go back and look at my videos and you can see, but basically we've blown six accounts and which would be, we would be down to 14. Now, since then I have a uh, past evaluations, three evaluations again. So currently we are at 17 funded accounts and currently I am trading. Uh, let me just pull up the rhythmic accounts again. So here are the rhythmic accounts that I currently have. And you can see, let me just, you can see here, I'm not going to go through and count them, but right here, all the way down to here, these are the 17 funded accounts that I currently have. And then we have these three evaluation accounts that I'm currently trading. And the way that we're trading those right now is I am trading the three evaluation accounts using copy trader. Um, I am using the, Oh, let me see. Okay. So I'm using the mini contracts for the evaluation accounts. And then I'm rolling, I'm doing a cross order to my funded accounts. So on my funded accounts, I'm trading the micros on the evaluation accounts. I'm trading the minis. So right now our balance on the three evaluation accounts, we're about, you know, 1750 in profit on the evaluation accounts. So we have about $1,300 more in profit to go, um, in order to pass, uh, these three evaluation accounts, and then we'll be back to 20 funded accounts. Now I do want to make one thing clear. I do not plan to kind of do that again. Um, just because I feel like it's kind of a bad habit. So basically, um, once I get to 20 funded accounts again, that's it. I'm not going to, if I blow a funded account, then that's just it. We're not going to keep adding funded accounts. Um, if I blow in a funded account, that's just, it is what it is. We're going to move on and focus on the remaining funded accounts. Now for the time being, I do plan to continue to trade the way that I am currently trading, which is using micros, um, using two micros. So the way that I blew some of my accounts is I did start trading on the funded accounts. I did trade minis for a certain amount of time, which did kind of work out, but we did, we did end up blowing three funded accounts, um, trading the minis. So I did switch back to trading micros. And right now I just want to focus. My biggest thing right now is I just want to focus on trading well. Um, one change I made this last week was hiding my profit and loss so that I can't see it. Um, people in chat, live trading, you'll be able to see the, the, uh, profit and loss, but I'm hiding it from myself. So I'm not trading my profit and loss, but just, I just want to focus on taking good trades, focus on being patient and my process and then with micros, I have the ability to do that without worrying about too much of a drawdown. And so, and I really like it. The last about a week and a half is when I started trading micros again. And I do like it, especially with the NQ. Um, I did trade micros with ES way in the beginning. And that was just kind of a slow death for me. But with the NQ... Um, trading micros, I feel like you have, you get big enough moves that it makes it more, uh, relevant, uh, more worth it. But, but anyway, that is kind of what I'm planning to continue doing. 
Um, and I just want to see, I need to be more consistent. I need to be more consistently profitable, uh, before I scale up, um, in any way. So for now, my size, my micros, I trade one or two micros. That is the size that I trade. And I plan to continue doing that for the foreseeable future. Again, until I am a little bit more consistently profitable. Once we're consistently profitable for maybe three, four weeks, you know, then we'll look into, you know, adding size, whatever. Um, but it is, you know, these have funded accounts is using the one time lifetime fee. So again, it's, there's no rush. And I think some of these accounts, at least like six, seven of them I've had, you know, we've had these accounts for like coming up on 60 days and yeah, it, there's no rush. I'm, I don't need to be in a rush to get these accounts, um, to pay out. Obviously the faster we do it, the better I would like it. But I want to focus right now on just being consistently profitable, focusing on my process, focusing on taking good trades, and then focusing on being patient when I'm in those trades, and then just seeing consistent profitability before I scale up in any way. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's switch to the trades, Ella, and we'll just kind of look at the overall Okay, so the overall, actually, sorry, I did want to just kind of go over the balances. Um, so you can see, obviously, the balances here. Let me just sort by lowest balance. So you can see here, these funded accounts are the two lowest balance we have, which is basically sitting at 49000 um, Now, my drawdown on all of these accounts, give or take maybe $100, but my drawdown for these accounts are right around 47,500. So, you know, we we still have plenty of drawdown available. There's no need to panic, and that's kind of why I just hey, I just need to take it slow, be consistent and then look at scaling up and taking it from there. So, again, these are the balances we're at right now. Obviously, this account, you know, these three accounts right here, these are the three accounts that we just passed the evaluation accounts maybe a week ago. Um, I'm not sure. I think it was a week ago that we passed these. So that's why these balances are a little bit higher. Um, and then obviously we have the evaluation account. So I wanted to just go over that. Okay, now let's focus on Tradezella. Again, um, obviously you can see here, we've not had a good time here. And uh, we are still learning, obviously... One thing I wanted to point out, so obviously with with blowing six accounts and each account having 2,500 in drawdown, if we take six times 2,500, um, that equals what is it, $15,000. So it's a little, the profit and loss is a little, I don't want to say it's misleading because this is the reality since I've done this funded journey. And I'm not... If I blow an account, the profit and loss stays on here. I'm not taking that off just because I blew the account. I feel like that would be, I feel like that wouldn't be transparent. Um, but if this makes sense, basically, you know, obviously, if we climb out of this hole and even get back to break even, our account balances are going to look like we actually are in a lot of profit. Uh, but we are basically have that $15,000 that we kind of have to make up for on all the six blown accounts. And I'm okay. I want to leave it like that, even though, um, yeah, it might get a little bit confusing, but I want to leave it like that because this, this is to track my funded progress. This is to track my funded balances and this, I feel like, is a true reflection of how I've been doing trading these funded accounts. And in reality, I did blow six accounts. So that is why that is staying on there. Okay. Um, overall, obviously, I don't know that I need to spend a lot of time going over this overall thing. It's ugly. I prefer not to look at it too much. Um, I'm going to change the date range to this week. Um, so for this week, 
we we had a short week. So obviously we had July 4th on Monday, on Tuesday. Monday, the markets were only open half a day. So we didn't take any trades in our funded accounts. Um, and also, obviously, as a note, my evaluation accounts, profit and loss, is not included in this summary. Actually, one thing that's really cool about Tradezilla for my evaluation accounts, I actually can show my progress on my, like this would, this is my, oh, let me just do all year, year to date. So this is the progress I had on my funded account progress um, when I chat, when I started. So obviously you can see this looks way better than what my evaluation progress obviously looks way better than what uh, it looks like on my funded account. Now, everyone asks and keeps asking why I do well with my evaluation accounts and then I don't do, I'm not doing well with funded accounts and uh, that's a million dollar question. Um, currently, I'm trading those three evaluation accounts exactly the same way because it's using Copy Trader. Um, it's copying over. Obviously, I the easy answer is trading 20 funded accounts at the same time, you know, is quite a bit different mentally than it is trading an evaluation account with 10 accounts. So that's the probably correct answer. And that's something I have to work through. Um, but I definitely feel like my fear of losing is way better especially since switching to two micros. Um, I don't really have that fear of losing like I was struggling with for a while. So I feel like we're definitely making progress in that department, but we still have other struggles. All right, I, uh, this video is running long, <laughs> uh, like usual, so let's just get into it. Um, but yeah, for the week, we basically, hang on, let me change this to week. Uh, for the week, we're at $400 profit. So is it great? Not great, but you know what? I will take any green day over any red day or any red week. So I'm happy with it. We started out the day uh, on Wednesday. Um, and here you can see, if you're new to Tradezilla, this is, I'll, I'll show you. If I click on a trade, you can drill down and it will show you exactly the trade that you took. Um, obviously here, I remember this trade. Um, we had made new highs and we came back and we tried four new highs and we failed. And then I entered on a pullback. And so every, every week I go back and I study my trades and I had three different times this week alone and that I took trades on a pullback when we had failed to make new highs, each time we had made new highs and then we failed to make new highs. And then I entered on a, another pullback. And for a continuation, my goal was always, you know, obviously this is in an uptrend. So I'm looking only for longs. But one thing I need to change is, I mean, this is this week only, but when we fail to make new highs and then we make another pullback, I need to stay out of that trade and bef until it actually makes new highs. So that was kind of a mental note I walked away with studying my trading this week. And I just wanted to uh, point that out. But actually, I always like to just read my journal note uh, for the day. Um, so on Wednesday, wasn't seeing the market well, got faked out twice on a pullback. One of them was the one I just showed uh, and then note, this is where I added my note on Wednesday. If we fail to make new highs on an uptrend, don't enter on a pullback. So just kind of a note for myself. And then also, um, no longer going to do runners. So that is kind of something we changed this week. Um, I was always in the past doing two contracts and my initial target was 30 ticks. And then after that, I would try to get a runner going and my stop was moved to break even. And it just wasn't working out. Um, in the long run, I was taking, I was getting stopped out for break even more than what I was getting a runner. And it just wasn't working out. It was messing up with my R to R ratio as well. Uh, not that I put that much value on that, but it just wasn't working. So going forward, 
I am just taking my full profit at 30 ticks. Unless I see something where I feel like I can get 50 ticks or more, I'll change my profit target. But I'm just taking everything off once I reach my profit target. And I'm not looking to get a runner going, at least for now. All right. Um, then we had Thursday. Again, I'm just going to read the notes. Um, good day overall. Was impatient on my one trade setup and took a loss when I wouldn't have had to. Um, and that is something here. I'm just going to pull it up again. I like I like reviewing my trades where I messed up or where I need to improve on. And here was one. I went short right here um, after we failed to make new highs. Entered a short right here. And I got, you know, right now, this is my biggest struggle. This is where I need to focus on the most, and it is my patience. And it's not my patience that I'm getting impatient and entering a trade when I shouldn't. I feel like I'm pretty patient as far as waiting for my setups. But where I struggle with being impatient is when I'm in a trade. And especially when I'm in profit and then I'm in drawdown and in profit and in drawdown and we just kind of doing this seesaw back and forth. Um, most of my setups, if I have a good entry, I have very little drawdown. Usually it'll just rip. And, you know, obviously those are the fun trades and those are what we want to do, but not all trades work like that. Sometimes it goes up and down and, you know, and I really struggle with being patient in that time. And I actually want to read a comment. Um, uh, I think it was TRJ. Uh, TRJ made a comment yesterday. And I think he had some very valuable um, wisdom here. And I'm not going to read everything. But basically just the biggest differentiator for someone who makes it in trading is if they have a solution for every problem they bring up. And he just mentioned, you know, listening to your review, I notice you bring up the problems, but I'm not hearing any solutions to those problems. Um, and he just goes on to say, what are some specific things that you think you can do immediately to see better results? For example, you feel that you're exiting trades too soon because you're not patient enough. Then what can you make sure to look for in the price action before early exits in the future to prevent it from happening again. And I appreciate, I, I think, I think he has a very valid point. Um, and it really got me to thinking that maybe I need to, um, instead of just defining when I am being impatient and defining the areas that I need to prove on, I want to focus more on solutions and okay, how can I actually, what can I do? What action can I take? to help my patients when I'm in a trade. So I don't really have an answer right now, but I am, I'm focusing on that and I'm, I'm looking to I'm kind of researching. I always enjoy psychological trading, the aspect of it and kind of working on that mental side of it. And what should I be doing to improve my patience when I'm in a trade? So Thanks for the comment. And again, if it, I, I appreciate those comments. I know sometimes I complain about people telling me how to trade. I think people sharing what has worked for them, sharing the psychological um, and the mental hurdles of trading, I really appreciate that. And to me, the psychological and mental aspect of trading is way more of more important almost than some trading strategy. Um, my opinion, but yeah, feel free to share in your, in the comments below. I read them and, uh, I appreciate it. Okay. Moving on. This video is running a little bit long. <laughs> Shocker. Okay. Moving on to Friday again. I'm just going to read the notes. Um, it was an okay day, but frustrating at the same time. Um, it was, I missed a lot of setups, good setups, from either being away from my desk or being too hesitant. Um, but still, overall, I was happy that I didn't enter a trade on FOMO. And I didn't just, you know, enter based off of really not a good setup, but just a trade. So I was 
like there's kind of a good takeaway that I was really patient, but there's a fine line between being patient and being hesitant. And I was definitely hesitant on one trade setup. Um, I showed it in my summary video yesterday. Um, but yeah, I just, again, struggle a little bit with patience when I was in a trade on one of my trades yesterday as well. So again, just, yeah, that's kind of the takeaway from this week is work on my patience, work on my patience when I'm in a trade. So I'll be reading books and looking at videos and trying to learn how other people do it and what they, how they overcame it. And if you, if you, if you overcame struggling to be impatient in your trading, tell me, tell me what you did mentally that helped you overcome that impatience when you're in a trade. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Feel free to comment on that. I really do appreciate that. So, all right, I'm going to wrap up the video. Um, it's already 26 minutes long. I don't know if someone is still even li listening, but uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, for everyone, for your support. I really do appreciate it. So take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll be back at this live Monday morning around 9 o'clock. Take care and God bless.